Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin hasn't really done much today, rallied into resistance, but only in three waves. So we don't have a confirmation that a low is in place. I have to say that very clearly. Probabilities are not clear until we get a first five wave advance. A correction is only over yeah, um, if we get a correct, uh, if we get an impulsive or at least a diagonal pattern to the upside. That means we need to have a five wave move and ideally one that breaks above resistance. At the moment, the price is holding resistance at 65,428 and the rally was only in three waves. So we take a look at that shorter time frame wave count in a minute. Quick explanation here of the overall structure. We're dealing here with a WXY pattern. So from that swing high here in uh, around the 14th of March, we had a wave W. X, Y. That's the white count. Allows definitely for one more low, possibly to 57,500 or even 55k. Um, and this is a scenario that remains valid as long as we only have three waves up. That's really, really important. Okay. I've been looking for three waves um, or for five waves here, but we only had three. So I could never confirm a low. And you see how important that is because it all broke down again. Yeah, it all broke down again. So we are dealing here with a situation where in the WXY pattern, one more low could absolutely happen. There is a scenario, as I said, this ABC structure in which the low could have formed here on Friday. Uh, I, I'm very open to that idea. I mentioned to you already this week that with this additional low that we've seen here on Wednesday already, um, I actually start to like this structure, this bottoming structure. It tells us that, okay, we have a nice three wave move. We've reached a 100% extension level, which is the, well, first ideal target for this C wave to the downside after the A wave bottomed here around the 20th of March. So we have enough points that we can use to consider, you know, that possibly a low is in, but we need, um, we need a five wave move above resistance for at least the first indication that a low is in until, until then we haven't got anything, right? There is not going to be any indication. So before we go to the smallest time frames, as soon as we have a low in place, we should see the price surge to around about 90K. Obviously, I can't confirm a low yet. I'm not calling a low is in place, okay? One more low has to be considered. All I'm doing is tracking a potential five wave move up so that we can understand what needs to happen for us to consider that a low is in. I mean, I'm considering it, but more like confirm it. So this is very important, very important difference. Technically speaking, the price could easily drop to 55.4K, yeah, which is typically the ideal target for a fourth wave. Now, I consider the entire area relevant, the entire orange support zone and use the microstructure to determine when a low could be in. But of course, you know, if there is a sudden sell off or something, the price could use the entire orange zone without invalidating the overall bullish thesis on the Bitcoin chart. So let's go to the shorter time frame. By the way, a few people asked me if I could, you know, say something about the halving. I don't know what, what I should say about the halving. I mean, we have um, we had member live streams about halvings and the halving cycle and everything. That's sort of nothing I would normally cover here the day to day, but we dive deep into specific member live stream tutorials into topics like these, um, but that already a while ago, and that, that's just sort of talk about the halving cycle. But I normally just follow the Elliott Wave cycle, right? It's much more reliable. It tells us everything we need to know. And there isn't anything specific about the halving that would directly impact prices, you know, not in the short term. Um, only sentiment affects prices, only sentiment, because that leads to buy or, or sell decision that generates fear and greed. And well, that is fear and greed. And we measure that with the Elliott waves. You know, there's nothing about, okay, the halving clock turned, you know, the countdown turned zero. It's not like the price is going to suddenly do something. I mean, most likely not. And if it is, then it's only because of sentiment. Okay. And we have for that, we have all the levels on the chart that you need. So there isn't really anything specific, um, you know, all that hype around, I don't know, there's, there's, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, it just makes me chuckle. 
Um, because it's not wasted time, right? You waste so much time looking at watching all this, you know, oh, having here, having there. But in, in the end, it's not going to affect prices directly. It cuts supply, yeah, indirectly over time, certainly, but not directly on the exchange. You know, there's it's just too complex. So prices are only made through the order book on the exchanges. And that order book is only generated through sentiment, fear and greed. Okay, so the orders placed there are purely coming from market sentiment. So that's all we that's why we use Elliott Wave. There is no need for anything different. Yeah, maybe sometimes MACD, maybe sometimes an RSI. You don't really need anything anything else. So yeah, um, looking at the count, the yellow count could have bottomed already. It's getting quite protracted, this fourth wave. Might be that something different is going on. I shared with you very clearly that this red line, once this breaks, we have something different going on here. Yeah, and it might break. So I wanted to see five waves up to confirm that a low has formed. First confirmation, a break above resistance. Okay, someone on, someone on Twitter said that, you know, we already had an impulse to the upside, but we didn't. It's only three waves. And even if we had, we never broke resistance. So nothing, you know, if, if it goes below the red line, of course it could still be bullish, but it's not in an impulse. Then it would be a diagonal um, and then it gets messy again. So in a diagonal, we could say, okay, you know, maybe that wave one was already in, but it was only a three wave move. Then this could be a wave two. Can I confirm with that that the low is in? No, I need to see all five waves then. That's the problem with these diagonals. If something like this, uh, like this happens here, uh, I have to wait for all five waves, the larger degree. Okay, because this turns from a small potential five wave move into a three wave move. And that's not clearly bullish. It's also not necessarily bearish, but it needs more. We need more evidence then. So, yeah, unless it turns around right now, this is, however, probably what's happening. That is turning into a larger diagonal. You can't trust these because they could also be corrective structures. But I think the parameters are still very clear. I need to see one more high. Ideally, it's turning around here to put in that fifth wave. And yeah, I mean, if not, then uh, we're probably morphing into a much larger diagonal pattern. And then this first rally was an ABC. So it's turning into a corrective mess, really. So yeah, we haven't really, I mean, the price hasn't really gone anywhere. Nothing too exciting at the moment. So I'll still keep you updated. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.